I looked at the disability services um, there, what they type of supports that they uh, will bring to me, because um, ultimately I knew I was going to use my um, accommodations when I got into college. Um, also, looking at class sizes really helped me. I know I'm more. I, su I succeed more in um, smaller class sizes. I also knew that I didn't want a huge um, campus where I had to drive across campus. I wanted everything kind of centralized. The very first thing I would ask on a tour, even if I was with a whole bunch of people or if I was just by myself, I would ask, after the tour, can you show me where the disability services or center, whatever it's called there, and I would actually go in there and actually talk to the people who were in that center um, and see just the type of supports they would provide, um, accommodations, just like the, just the um, atmosphere of the whole place. When I first do sign up for classes, I will email those professors. It's usually a couple weeks before class ends. Um, I would email those professors and say, hey, I'm, I will be in your class next year. Is there a time when we can meet up um, so we can just talk and so I can get to know you and you can get to know me? And then from there, I will um, really tell them a little about myself before I even tell them that I have a disability, just so that they know I'm, I'm me before my disability. So. Um, and then once we get to know each other and I say, I do have a disability, um, later on when I do get my accommodations, because you do get a sheet with all your accommodations, and I, I give it to them at the beginning of each year, but um, since uh, it's still not the year yet, I just talk to them and say, these are, I will need these um, accommodations, because um, I know when you do talk to your professors, it is very intimidating to actually talk to them, let alone asking for their help. So really being able to have the confidence and being able to speak up for yourself and knowing what you need, um, also knowing your strengths and weaknesses. Yes, uh, my freshman year, my very first class I went to, I did what I was always told to do when um, going to college is, you know, before the college starts, go into the class or go to meet the professor, which I did before school even started, and we got to talk, it seemed very nice, and so, when I handed him my accommodation sheet, he looked over, he said, yes, we can give you this, yes, we can give you that, no, I will not give you this. And it, was, it happened to be recording class lectures, which is a real struggle for me if I don't get the recording because I don't, sometimes I just don't hear things or sometimes my brain just kind of shuts down and five minutes goes by and I have no idea what we're talking about. So I really had to fight that saying, I do need it, I'm not gonna cheat because it was, a law class, so he really didn't want me because it was the same lecture over and over again each year and each year. When I, that's what I found out, and so he really didn't want me to use those recordings and sell it. Um, so I kept talking to him in office hours, very polite, not demanding, but very uh, trying to be an adult and saying, "I do need these. I will succeed. I promise you, I won't do anything with these." And ultimately, I actually had to use the disability center to have a meeting with him as well as um, the people who are in the Disability Center. And we met up um, and we actually came up with an agreement where I could record. However, I had to create a contract saying at the end of the year, I will delete all these in front of him and um, all the lecture notes. And we had each had to sign on it. And so I actually did get to, at the very end, get to use my accommodations. But I did have to fight for it a little bit. And that's not with every professor. now. All the professors I've known these days will let me use it. They have no questions about it. And a lot of them will actually like, do you need this? Do you need this? So they're very approachable. And, but the big thing is just not to be afraid. You're going to have those times where you have a class in the morning and maybe three hours later you have another class. And you might not want to go to that class at the end of the afternoon. You probably just want to hang out. Um, but make sure you actually go to those classes. and getting the work done on time, um, even before ahead of time. I know a lot of professors do give you a syllabus of what you're gonna be doing each week. Um, so making sure you're organized and that you're keeping up with all the work, knowing what times best work for you. I know for me, night times is because it's quiet, it's um, and not much things happening, so I don't get distracted. So at nighttime, that's when I tend to get a lot of my work done, a lot of my best work done. So figuring out what, when you need to get stuff done, where to get it done. Um, libraries do not help for me. There's too much distractions and I tend to like look and see who's there, kind of talk to them. So really not doing much work. Um, so I figured out in my room by myself um, is really what helped me. So time management and also make sure you
do eat, <laughs> uh, go out and actually eat three meals a day uh, or two, depending on what your meal plan is. Uh, but eat a good meal, not just fries or something, but try to get that well balanced because ultimately if you feel bad, you're not gonna go to class uh, trying to really keep yourself healthy.